Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on Flying Tribal. Flying Tribal is a, another of the uh, mechanic tribal synergy decks, which we do occasionally here, where you are basically, I suppose you would call more of a, a tempo-y kind of deck, but you could argue this is mid-range. It can do a lot of things, so we're not going to get too hung up on the titles. We'll go over first the sort of um, flying core components here, and then we'll work our way down the line as usual. First, we have four copies of Empyrean Eagle, a three-minute 2-3 two, three flying that gives other creatures the flying that we control, plus one, plus one. It's a flying lord, it's flying itself, everything the deck wants. We have four Watchers of the Sky, two men, two, two flyer that gives creatures spells we control with flying that cost one less to cast. And when another creature with flying enters the battlefield under our control, the Watcher gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Oops. Watcher is nice. It's at worst a flying bear and can also help to accelerate the or reduce the cost of other flying creature spells. And if you can happen to pump it up and get some more damage in, it's also very nice. Also running three Skycat Sovereigns, two mana 1-1 one, one flying that gets plus one plus one for each other creature we control with flying. A nice kind of flying payoff, also having flying itself. And for two or for four mana basically, we can make a 1-1 one, one little catbird flying catbird token. That is the cutest token ever, goddamn. Which not only pumps the Skycat itself, but also adds to our own board and with the other cards in the deck also the even the tokens themselves can get rather imposing also running uh four copies of favorable winds a two mana enchantment that gives creatures we control with flying plus one plus one so we have a good mix of payoff and lords lord and the eagle lord and the wind payoff and the sovereign and a sort of payoff and kind of a ramp card in the watcher and that's the base of the uh flying core cards also run one Safara Skyblade as a, not only as a, just a curve topper if you needed to, you can also get out in, or ideally you can get it out kind of early for fairly cheap. Also gives our other creatures control, we control flying indestructibles, so it's nice against the, or some of the uh, board sweepers that are in the format. We also run three Kira Great Glass Spinners as a three mana 2-2 two, two flyer that gives all of our creatures a sort of bubble, a one-time bubble each turn. Nice way to slip individual target removal. And it hap happens to be a flying creature itself. For the remaining sort of glue that's holding the deck together, we are splashing green for Collected Company because the card is just that good. And most of the important uh, flying cards are can be actually cast with the Collected Company. The exceptions being our Skyblade and our Dream Trawler, which we'll get to in a moment. Also, on the point of Collected Company, we have our Splashing Green for this. We just have a couple of basic forests as well as pathways that allow us to have access to green or the other color of our deck. Also, running four copies of Winged four copies of Winged Words, a three mana draw two, which is at worst an old school divination. And as at best a two mana draw too, which is actually pretty good. And since we'll often have a creature we control half flying, we can somewhat reliably actually count on Winged Words being two mana draw two. Running four copies of Skyclave Apparition as a sort of catch all early removal, and three copies of Dovin Veto to, to help also get rid of those nasty sweepers or individual, say, big annoying planeswalkers or key removal spells on the one creature that we need to get rid of. And the other creature at our top end is Dream Trawler, which is a basically a big old flappy boy. Two, two white, two blue for three, five, flying and lifelink. Whenever we draw a card, it gets plus one power to the end of the turn, and when it attacks, it draws a card. And we can discard a card to give it hexproof, but you have to tap it. Dream Trawler is good as a top end curve, not only because, due to its ability to give itself hexproof, it can very easily sort of slip a lot of removal spells. We can all, and also having lifelink 
much like the Safara, helps to stabilize against more aggressive decks. It also has an ability to generate uh, card advantage over long, a long enough time frame. And usually a, a Dream Trawler will live long enough to at least replace itself, which is always very nice. And with, say, the Watcher of the Skies, you can get Dream Trawler down a turn or two early, earlier than you normally would. Land base, pretty simple. We get, again talked about we have Pathways as our main source of splashing into green. We're running three temples because while we are a creature-based deck, we're not balls-to-the-wall aggro, so we don't mind taking a turn off for the card information, as well as just the general fixing it provides. I have one pathway for the same reasons of fixing. We have four Azorius shock lands because they're just very good for what our deck wants to do. A couple forests, should somebody field of ruin one of our green sources, or ghost quarter, which happens far more than one would think. And then we just have an even split of islands and plains as the deck is at its core a base uh, blue-white deck. Also running two copies of Blink Moth Nexus as a sort of flyer that can just sit and be protected as a land, which is largely uninteractable. And in the late game, if you need to turn it on with, say, copies of Favorable Winds or even Imperium Eagles, the Blink Moth, while it would seem to be very unassuming in a vacuum by itself, late game with only a couple of support cards like a Favorable Winds, the Blink Moth can actually sort of become an alternate win con. Sideboard, fairly simple. We tried to also make use of the Flying Synergy. A couple of Husher Bringers as a way to get around, say, like Muxus entering the battlefield as a way we kind of sort of uh, counter that or, you know, uh, Creature Dying. Basically, Husher Bringer turns off some really annoying stuff like Cats entering and stuff or... Muxus is also a flyer with lifelink, so it happens to work with what the deck wants to do. Run two Remorseful Clerics, also another flying card, but we can sacrifice it to exile a player's graveyard. There are enough uh, graveyard decks fly, you know, floating around that we enjoy doing this. Also run two copies of Archon of Emeria, especially if our deck, our opponent is playing some uh, particularly greedy three mana or three color land base or even three color and up land base. It's a nice way to sort of apply tax effects. And against more aggressive decks, or maybe in the future, depending on when you might be watching this at home, the ability to only let each player cast one spell a turn can turn off those pseudo storm decks, or your mono red burn decks, from really, really being too explosive. We have three absorbs as a way not only to gain a little bit of life, but as a sort of catch-all removal. Of course, the removal being if you can counter it. We run two copies of Yasharn with the overabundance of sacrifice decks in the format. Yet another reason to splash green in the deck, which we already did. Two Teferis if we're going against the really ultra control decks and we need to like also kind of go as controlly as them. Since most really heavy, say, blue-white control decks, for example, We'll have more than enough board wipes and sweepers to just ruin your day. This gives you a way to answer it in turn. We also run two time wipes as our board wipe of choice. I chose time wipe in particular since we are still a board based creature deck. And if we can save even one important creature, sometimes when you're bringing in the time wipe in the aggro mirror, sometimes all you need is that one creature to live after a board wipe to be able to turn the corner, and I think Time Wipes are a really good example of doing this. You can run other sweepers, but you will be killing your own board almost all of the time. And that is Flying Tribal. We will be going to game number one now in just a moment. Game number one with Flying Tribal. Honestly, pretty good hand. Can't terribly complain too much. Four lands, three spells, things to do. Probably play the Watcher on two and the Sky Cat on three. And less. Uh, maybe that's changed. There's a 
three, three. That's three, three. Maybe we will sky cat on two. I lied, which is gonna be a watcher of the spheres. So we can hopefully get the Dream Trawler or our Safara ideally a turn earlier. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it through. We'll play a Plains and do the Empyrean Eagle play again. Next turn, what do we do? One, two, three, four, five. We can play Sky Cat Sovereign if nothing else happens. Might just play the Green Source so we can have access to the... Uh, collected company we talked about in the deck tech portion. Huh. Blue white soul sisters? Oh, that's lovely, actually. Um. Okay, we're gonna still play the pathway for green. We'll sky cat first, just to ensure our favorable winds mana isn't messed with. Go ahead, gain your life. It won't save you now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We've kind of shown the deck doing its thing. Pa pa! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Your move. Please gain a creature and get your piddly amount of life points. <laughs> oh no! I'm so scared. <laughs> Not <laughs> lies. <laughs> we'll go ahead and play the pathway. Play it for white, as we should be able to play the dream trawler. Good, I didn't mess up my mana, which I'm often want to do. Go ahead. I'm so scared of your little tiny kitty cats. <laughs> Fear my flappers. <laughs> I don't know if I die, but this is too awesome. Uh, let's see, six, five, yeah, we were threatening lethal. Hang on, wait, did he still just die? Six, five, he still dies, right? Oh, yeah, he lands with flyer. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Be gone, Cardi Toe 86. Uh, let's see what, what will we bring in against our opponent here. Might bring in a couple time wipes, maybe. Take out, like, one dream trawler and one collected company. The time wipe here just being a just-in-case-we-have-a-bad-draw kind of panic thing we can hopefully bank on. Because we don't get that good of an opening hand and get nothing afterwards. We're actually going to keep this. It seems a little sketchy, but it's two mana. We have things to do. We draw by just being on the draw. Hi, honey. I know. And we can also play the temple to scry and look for better cards. Isn't that right? My little tiny nanners. I love you. So we'll play the temple on turn one and look for a land if we don't draw one here. I believe our opponent... That's pretty unassuming. Again, look for a land. Favorable ones is funny, but we need a land. I love you! Another plane from our opponent, followed by a Daxos. That's a thing we can do. Um, I believe we'll just play the Watcher of the Spheres here. Is it enters? Yes, enters or dies. That'll do it. Gonna go ahead and not block there. Uh, we will play the Empyrean Eagle as it just pushes the most damage. See what happens next turn to see what we do. 
think we might want to save the Skyclave Apparition if they should play like a Pride Mate or that Resplendent Angel. Kind of like that. Since this card, with his setup on board now, can quickly climb out of range of my ability to, like, deal damage to, if that makes any sense. Uh, nothing we really draw here makes a terrible amount of difference. So we'll just play the Fountain Untapped. So we have two... Yes, we can play the Skyclave. Playing the Skyclave. Targeting the Pride Mate. And hitting with our Flying Force of Baddies. This deck is honestly pretty fun. Do I think you can get to Mythic with it? I mean, yeah. Now, if you're looking, are you looking for a fun deck to play in Historic Best of Three? That can actually climb you to about the middle point of Platinum? This deck will do that all day long. Ooh, Ilando from our opponent. Am I crazy? I don't remember seeing any of the blue splash in our opponent's deck here. You run a Hollowed Priest as a worse version of a Johnny. Or, like, a Johnny's Pride Mate's crappier cousin. Uh, I guess we'll just play the Skycat Sovereign. And the Favorable Wind. Just looking to make our board as big as possible. Making sure the Hollow Priest doesn't have flying. Though it wouldn't matter, it's more of a... Uh, a, a, what's the word? A, a precaution, that's the word that we need to take advantage of. Our opponent, I guess, could run a sweeper here? And that is a thing you can do. I mean, okay, what do you take, though? There's a, there's a lot for you to take here. I'm, I'm not going to lie. But I don't think it, our our game plan totally buckles here Yeah, to any one thing being removed. Opponent has one mana left open. And arguably correctly does not attack. We'll just go ahead and play the Dream Trawler. Dream Trawler is kind of our card that we play that should set us over the edge. If we're able to attack one or two times with a Dream Trawler, we've almost certainly turned the corner against an aggressive deck. Or if you play this at home, once you hit with a Skyclave, or Dream Trawler, sorry, you've basically turned the corner. On to game number two. Game number two with uh, Flying Tribal. Again, we'll play first because we have a brain. Four lands, three spells. Have access to the green for a collected company should we draw it. Honestly, pretty damn good. Can't super complain. We'll go ahead and play the pathway for blue. Ah, somebody else also has... Or I think that's the, the draft pre-order, I think. Uh, we'll go ahead and play the planes right now to play the sky cat. Since odds are we won't be able to do anything next turn for three mana regardless, we'll just play the Temple, if nothing else, and then play the Favorable Winds. Unless we draw something like that. Backup plan, Empyrean Eagle, and we start really hitting our opponent. Opponent has shown some real Liliana pride, and to be fair, Liliana's a cool character. See nothing but swamps from our opponent and some Liliana love, so mono black maybe? Is it mono black, uh, like lantern? Mono black control? I discard two cards. Oh no. Um. Uh, honestly, I could discard the lands and I kind of don't care. I mean. The one thing that would kind of suck is if they Ritual of Soot, but neither of the cards I discarded would have helped against that. So yeah, like a Ritual of Soot would very much suck. Or Bantu's Reckoning, whatever that... I think Last Reckoning, whatever that Black Sweeper's called. That's close enough. 
I have not seen that card run at all. Soul Shatter, instant, three mana. Each opponent sac my well, that fucking sucks. Uh sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest cost amongst Oh okay. Okay, I get that. We'll go ahead and Skycat now so we can push more damage. Normally you should wait until the end of your opponent's turn to give the illusion that you have an answer, even if you don't. But in this case it pulls more That's your main deck sweeper? I mean... Okay, I, I guess. You gotta... Are you maybe some weird, like, mono-black tribal deck that just hasn't drawn any... Oh, no, that's lovely. Luckily, we have an answer for that. So it does appear to be mono-black. Whether it's like a devotion build or just like a... Kind of generic mono black mid range good stuff is yet to be seen. And even if he kills our Skyclave, it's way better than him having the actual Bloody Raider because that is some stuff we cannot deal with. Dive wow, Divest. Alright. That is a card you do not see a whole lot of play. Or that does not see a whole lot of play, really. Ah, shit. Um. I think we might try and go a little more controlly. So maybe. Maybe just some absorbs and some teferis. I guess. Turgrid. Uh, honestly, I'll take that. Turgrid is something that we can, like, sort of deal with. Online permanent, discard a permanent card. So yeah, this appears to just be some sort of mono black, kind of a mid rangey good stuff deck. So I think I should be able to be able to out control this. They have some good creatures, so we might also bring in some time warps. So we might just like transition into a more blue white control based kind of deck. Isn't that right, baby girl? I know you want the pets and scratches from Dad. Um, hi, Han. I love you. We'll go ahead and veto the Blood Chief's Thirst, because we don't want to die. I know! Daddy will pet and cuddle the baby later. I love you. Oh, Turgid's five mana. Damn. Right? Well, that sucks a lot, because if he, uh, or if they manage to discard anything from our hand... You know, that actually might have been... I might have messed that up. It might be the correct play just to play the Skyclave and target nothing. So they can't make me discard it like that. Damn it! I fucking knew it. I mean, it would have... Uh, I mean, I don't think we win that game, game one, so it's fine. We're just going to transition into, like, a blue-white control deck. Uh, cut some of the... Honestly, Safara's not that good. If they're running minus uh, sweepers that uh, circumvents uh, all of our indestructible stuff. Uh, we'll get rid of some more of the flying payoffs. Uh, Akira's kind of nice. Maybe we actually go up. We stayed at three Kiras. Simple because that's just a good card to help slip removal spells. I do like our opponent's deck, though. Just a mono black mid range deck. Just play a lot of good stuff whenever you can. Try and play on curve. Hopefully, you outvalue your opponent. Our opponent is really taking use of the sideboard phase, to their credit. What, honey? I know, I can pet you while I'm waiting for our opponent. I love you. I know, you're sissies, but on the chair behind me. I know. I love you. Yeah, that's almost done recording. And you can come pet that baby. You could always come sit in Dad's lap. Dad enjoys a lap cat. Anywho, <laughs> on to the game. We'll go ahead and play first again. 
This is an actively bad hand. That, yeah, uh, that's better. It's better, but I'm gonna chuck a favorable win. So that's a card that we, if we happen to get to it, that's great. I don't, I mean, this is one of those you shouldn't mulligan did like five cards if you can avoid it. Ugh. Oh boy. Come on, game. I mean, I guess if we just, like, hit land drops up to Collected Company, it's a way to bounce back. Got a Waste Knot, too. Okay, that's that's better. I can do something against that. We'll just hold open the veto and just try and counter whatever inevitable discard spell that's coming. God, I love Waste Knot. That card kicks ass. It's so cool. Let's see what our opponent plays. Tiny bones. Alright. Again, we'll just keep up and collect company at the end of their turn, or we can Dovin's Veto if we're terribly scared of them discarding something of note. Ooh, Scavenger Grounds. Very nice. Target player discards two cards. You know what? I think it's actually worth vetoing this card. Since they have Waste Knot, not only are they making me lose stuff, they are also generating stuff on their own. And I was going to generate, or I was going to probably chuck creatures, so. Uh, I still think that we're going to do the same thing of keeping open a collected company. Maybe the fear of another Dovin's Veto might uh, get them to pull their punches for a turn. Eradicator. It's the first time I've seen this card in the wild. I forgot what this card does. Uh, four mana, four three, left flank, hexproof from walkers, boast, sect creature, each opponent. Okay. That looks very cool, to be fair. If he attacks with the tiny bones, we'll go ahead and collect a company in response. Maybe kill it. I mean, alright. I would have preferred to get two things, but it kills the tiny bones. Yeah, that was arguably the incorrect play, my dude. Probably just play an Empyrean Eagle next turn, unless we get another blue source. We can do both. Nope, in that case, we'll just play an Eagle. Uh, flying lifelink. We'll go ahead and not attack. If I can get, well, if I can land the next Empyrean Eagle before another, like, sweeper, ah, shit. You take the Eagle all day long, it's not even a, a fucking contest of what you pick. That really sucks, since there's only two more in the deck, I believe, or it might be three after sideboards, I'm, I don't remember what I sideboarded up. Fuck me. Yeah, that's why that card's really good. That's honestly a pretty good discard outlet, since you can cycle it if they have nothing to do. If he attacks with the Valkyrie, I think we just eat it for a turn. Since now we're also just gonna, like, perpetually play our cards, provided it's not like a counterspell. Yeah. Since a counterspell is the only thing we, like, can't play... Right now, we just don't want to give him anything. And this is kind of the downside of such a heavy discard theme in a deck. Once your opponent is kind of out of cards, you know, the jig is up. Can I not... Oh, I don't have two blue spells. Fucking... Fuck, that sucks. Might cut one forest. And go up another... Fucking, that irritates the sh We literally might have just lost, and that fucking sucks. Uh, unless we draw, like, a... Uh, no, we don't even, wouldn't even have to mana to play a sweeper next turn. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, we got like a, uh, well, the Calicta Company might let us live, but I don't hold much hope, really. Probably play some discard spells. Since there's a real chance we just immediately die. Honestly, I'll take- I'll just sweep it now. I don't care. If he makes us discard our collective company, life sucks, but we are alive, which is a not an important thing. Why are people running this card? <laughs> like, this card is gonna, like, give him the false idea that this is a good card to play. Ha ha! Defest Bricked. This is a bad card. Don't play it if you aren't playing Commander. Or Brawl, I suppose. It's a very bad card. Uh, honestly, we're probably going to Skyclave that. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Again, if they make us discard our hand, that's fine. They're now no longer getting things or additional value out of making us discard stuff. Feel their hand... Card, cost three or higher. That sucks, but again, we are alive. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Let's see what our opponent has to do. All those utility lands. That is not what I needed, game. Um, odds are he probably doesn't play anything and he just hits me a couple times. I basically have to draw, like, an answer to this token, otherwise I'll die. And yeah, he's doing the right thing. He's just not giving the opportunity for me to counter anything. A sky cat will do. It is a thing. Well... Maybe. Does he have a removal spell? Because if you have a removal spell, I will absorb the removal spell. Thus allowing me to just take the hit. Again, we absorb this. Now you... Oh, hang on. What kills me here? Because now I'm just going to eat the, 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 the hit. Unless you have like, um, like a, like a hail of torment or whatever that, that black burn spell is called. Do you know what it is, baby girl? Okay, that's a thing. Why did you not target, turn card? I don't know why you didn't kick that. If he keeps playing a little too fast and loose, loose with his life total, he'll kill himself for me. Um, honestly, I think we just play the Skyclave to block. It doesn't look good, but again, we're not dead, and we can play to our outs here and win this. And we still have another game to go. Good, a target wouldn't have... I wouldn't have been able to get rid of Turgor no matter what I did if I kept this, regardless. What the hell is our opponent doing? I mean, I guess... Oh, you named Illusion. Ooh, that was a good play. I don't know if that's the Black Sweeper you want to run, though. Need a Sweeper? We'll go ahead and play it, because I want the quest completion, and we'll just go to the last game. I actually felt okay about that one, once we do the sweeper. So yeah, I mean... Honestly, pretty good. The deck is a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Uh, like if you like the video, sub if you like me, and if you have any sort of questions or constructive criticisms to levy against me, that's what the comments are for. Thank you all. Have a great day. And remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.